first. Hundreds of Wisconsin National Guard troops are activated ahead of the expected verdict in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial next week. And as the judge rules that the jury will be able to now consider lesser charges, there are reports that he is getting death threats. And one of them reads, enjoy your term, judge. It's going to be your last. If I ever meet you in person, I fully intend to spit directly into your face. Regardless the cost, you're disgusting. Now, Rittenhouse's mother is coming to the judge's defense. Judge Schroeder is a fair judge. He does not like the nonsense in the courtroom. And anybody that lives in Kenosha or Kenosha County knows that. And he is a fair judge. And I have respect for that. All right, guys, Emily, I want to come to you first because I want to talk about these lesser charges. You know, this reads to me like prosecutors feel like they're not going to get this guy on the murder charge, so they're going to try for something else. Is that what you're reading, too? Right. I think that's a, a good overarching takeaway from this. And keep in mind that the more charges that are thrown at the jury, the more explanations, the more complicated it becomes, then the more confused they are. And frankly, the harder it is to come to a seamless consensus decision for Kyle Rittenhouse. And this is what I want viewers to understand. First of all, if prosecutors seek those lesser convictions, then a life sentence is off the table. And what was going back and forth between the judge and prosecution and defense are lower charges on both the initial initial murder from intentional homicide down to a lower degree, meaning that, yes, he feared his life was in danger, but it was an unreasonable use of force. And the second decrease was in regards to the endanger, the reckless endangerment homicide. And that is essentially, or actually that wasn't the homicide, it was the shooting. And that was that there was no utter disregard for life regarding the reporter that was standing behind the victim there. So there's a lot to go into for these juries, but I think that what remains to be seen is how the prosecution will seek these actual charges. And remember, there's a chance that they might still throw in a provocation instruction, which means that regardless if we think, if the jury thinks that indeed he feared for his life and used reasonable force for that self-defense argument, it throws it all off the table if it was he who provoked those men that night. Okay, we're going to see what happens in the next uh, 48 hours here. He should come out with something on Monday. Sean, there has been so, uh, so many outside opinions on this case. You know, people like LeBron James this week got a lot of heat because he was pretty much making fun of Kyle Rittenhouse, saying that he was being fake on the stand when he was crying. CNN's Don Lemon seems to think that the judge is being biased, calling him, um, saying that he's treating Kyle Rittenhouse as if he's his grandson. And then there's this, the media basically slamming uh, the judge here. Watch. I've never seen anything like this before, where a judge yelled quite like this. His behavior is, um, at the very least, unusual. And... Um, Concerning, treating Kyle Rittenhouse as if he's his grandson, um, you know, just just berating the prosecution. No one needs to be berated like that in a courtroom. He has made a series of decisions. Each one perhaps may be individually defensible, but in totality lead to the impression of a biased, racist judge. Okay, but there are people who've known this judge for years, and they completely disagree with this. Meanwhile, he's getting threats. Sean, what's happening here? So let's take a step back for a moment. I think, to, you know, per uh, Emily's analysis, when you look at the facts and you want, as a, as a prosecutor, you want to make it as simple as possible for the jury to understand. So yes, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse is there. Yes, they, he might, maybe he shouldn't have been there. Some jurors might think, and he had a gun. They might think he shouldn't have a gun. But when you simply look and say he did not prompt or instigate anything with the protesters, and when he came into conflict, he actually fled. He tried to get away. He ran away until his life was in danger, until he fell and someone pointed a gun at him. Did he actually fire when someone was, you know, uh, swinging a, a, a skateboard at his neck? Did he fire? Or when he was caught behind a dumpster? So I think when you simplify it, uh, this is a really easy case of self-defense. But here's my concern, Aisha. It's that if you have liberals on the jury... As you look at, as you listen to liberals across the country, they're not looking at facts. They're just about emotion. And the emotion of this is very real for them. And if you get 12 liberals on the jury, they very well may convict them. But we have to remember, it has to be unanimous. So all 12 jurors have to agree to guilt or to innocence. If anyone disagrees, it'll be a hung jury. They'll have to retry it. And just one last yeah. point. I think this prosecutor was a horrible prosecutor. And, and the defense and the prosecution, they don't, they're not the evidence. It's the witnesses and the videotape. 
but both lawyers present theories of the case to the jury. And it matters how believable you are. And if the jury doesn't like the prosecution, right. um, they are not going to side with their theory. So uh, a whole bunch of factors in play here. Yeah, and we've seen that in big cases in the past, too. You know, Joey, there is what's happening inside the courtroom, and then there's a court of public opinion. You know, last year, more than 100 businesses just destroyed by protests in Kenosha. People are nervous. The National Guard is ready to go. How do you think this ends if Kyle Rittenhouse is acquitted of murder? Um, would would getting in trouble for lesser charges would that matter or do you do you foresee more of what we saw last year i think the fact that the uh, the people that that died in this incident are white is probably the only saving grace from riots happening because i think that race is played a big issue in, in the riots, and it's been something that people jump on top of and say, look, they're racist, and, and, and kind of incite people's passions that way. I, I think it's going to be a lot harder to use that same line of thought if Kyle Rittenhouse is found not guilty. You know, outside of all of that, I think the one thing people need to understand is that every state gets to determine its self-defense laws in, in big part based on precedent and what the state constitution allows. Every state has the opportunity to decide uh, what is or isn't admissible into a court like this. And I think at the end of the day, what people need to, need to do, what I'm most worried about is if Kyle Rittenhouse is found guilty on, say, a provocation clause in this court case, what the judge is trying to do is narrow this down to the two or three split seconds that actions happen and were they were they justified in that moment what the prosecution is doing is they're conceding that, that they probably were justified in that split second and that's why they're going to intent and that's why they're going to provocation and everything that led up to that moment what I don't want to happen is for the people in that in that state to lose their self-defense rights based on rights based on case precedent because this has become such a big deal and the jurors may be influenced by outside media like Don Lemon or the president of the United States calling this man a racist before he ever went on trial. I think he made a lot of stupid decisions and as a Second Amendment supporter, I definitely don't want people to go act the way Kyle Rittenhouse did leading up to that moment. But everything I've seen in studying the Second Amendment and self-defense and every opportunity I've had the I've been able to, I see someone that used a gun in self-defense justifiably, even if they didn't do uh, common sense things leading up to that. And, and like the judge said, he's not on trial for not having common sense. He's on trial for whether or not he used self-defense legally. And for every other yeah. resident of that state, I hope that self-defense is withheld or held up in this trial. And Sean, really I, I quickly. I make one last point, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I will. Just so, just, you know, so, so Governor Evers said he's going to call it the National Guard, right? That's a good thing, so we don't have rioting. But what happened in Wisconsin is Kenosha was burning for days, and Governor right. Evers didn't do anything. I was, exactly I was right. talking to the president and his team, and, and we we're begging Governor Evers to send the National Guard and snuff this out. If Governor Evers had done his job, there would be no riot, there would be no case, there would be no death. And frankly, Evers should be on trial, not Kyle Rittenhouse. Sean, Emily, do you think we get a verdict quickly? Yes, I, I do. do. Mm -hmm. And I think we're, it's going to be for one of those lesser charges. I foresee yeah. the reckless endangerment, the lower second degree version, and that is a maximum of 10 years in prison with a misdemeanor All of right. having that gun, which is nine months, but yeah. he will serve a lot less. Okay.